Yo, what is going on gang? I wanted to share today a little bit of the thought process that goes into bot bending. And uh, so this one will be a little bit of an extended video. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get with it. So let's look at these two builds. Um, you know, a lot of the bot bending stuff that I do, it starts with like a prompt, like a creative writing prompt kind of, right? I mean, you think about it in the creative writing project or a build is, is the output of like um, kind of a concept, you know, a prompt that you have and then you kind of roll with it. And so for this one, um, it started with this. And uh, as I mentioned in the video before, um, this is an IG friend of mine by the name of Kuromi Kitten. And she had put Rodimus um, on top of, um, sitting on top of the Magnus boots. Obviously there's some like lore synchronicity there with Rodimus and Ultra Magnus. And so I think that's why she did it. Um, but it really kind of possessed me. And you think about it and that was the prompt that got it going. It's like, what if Rodimus Prime um, had picked up the matrix kind of and he had uh, been given like an ultra magnus armor so to speak and that was the genesis of this particular build um, but in terms of switching it out for the galaxy prime boots um, that's just because he had red over here and so um, and i thought thematically it might make a little bit more sense because you know rodimus prime um, taking taking over from optimus prime and optimus prime is blue and red and so you see those are kind of like the creative elements that went into building this guy and then after creating this guy, you know, of course, and then um, in terms of how I created him, figuring out how to use the slammer forearms and just slammer overall, uh, that was just a little bit of trial and error and also me being familiar with um, slammer. Uh, and so, yeah, and that's how he was created. This one over here, um, you know, I kind of took the concept of robot with collapsible legs, using the slammer bit, being able to plug into an Ultra Magnus like type boots. And I thought, you know, who else would look cool? And of course, we have Starscream, uh, you know, in his moment of temporary moment of glory when he was um, cor coronated or crowned. Um, I should have looked that up. Is coronated a verb? Yeah, I don't know. But that's what, what gave rise to this one, basically. It's like, you know, I want to make him special. I want to make him ultra Starscream. And how are we going to do that? And so same concept that we borrowed over here. So you can see there's a lot of similarities. Um, I didn't like how the arms looked because, um, you know, before adding Cog, it was just um, it was just Starscream and some um, slammer bits, and uh, rather than just you know be content with that, I was like, ah, let's do a little bit more. And so I introduced Cog over here, which is really cool. Um, and I purposely introduced Cog and not any other bot because there's the red and blue. But also I recognized that the Ultra Magnus forearm armor would be able to plug into Cog's arm because I'm familiar with um, um, the placement of the ports, and it worked out pretty good. And so that's kind of like how this guy came together. So you see, um, a lot of it is just prompt, creative writing prompt and kind of carrying that over and then being able to manifest that, so to speak. By the way, it's after work, so I got a really, really froggy and kind of sore throat. So uh, please forgive me, I've been talking all day. Um, this guy over here, um, <laughs> this is, I don't know, I pretty much just wanted to play with the translucent, um, the translucent folks. And um, I was thinking like, um, you know, I mean, I have three Skeletor. I mean, I, I have actually more than three Skeletors, but um, I'd done a three Skeletor and a two Tricranius build before. And so this one, I was like, why don't we do three Tricraniuses and uh, two Skeletors? And this is what we ended up with. And in terms of how I built this, this one started from the bottom up. I started with the feet. And honestly, the parts that I just built first was this calf this foot um this thigh this uh torso and uh, that's the tail by the way don't get it twisted that's the tail poking off from the back um this torso and uh and these arms and so of course there were just a ton of bits left over you know legs tails um claws and so like the initial skeleton of the body i built within like, I don't know, like 10 minutes or something, but it took like, I think an hour and change to um, figure out where all the other bits were gonna go on top of it. And it ended up actually being very sturdy because you can see these things are, well, you can't really see them here, but um, they have multiple points of connections on them. And so ultimately, yeah, this is a really, really fun project. And this again, the prompt was just, you know, play with translucence, tra play with translucence and see what you can do. This one over here, this guy, and, and um, and some of these guys I don't think I've shown on the channel yet, or, or I guess it depends when I'm going to release this video. But um, this over here is obviously Killer B, black and yellow, kind of construction worker theme going on. 
like ironworks obviously has that like industrial vibe going on to him and uh zitar I, I don't know for some reason in my mind like centurion drone brunt zitar they just strike me as these like sturdy hardy construction like worker guys kind of and also just the yellow and black fit really well i mean it's not a perfect fit but there is kind of like this theme going on and so that's how i started and for this guy um I, I started so again yeah that was the prompt yeah create like a construction type guy using yellow and blacks and um, yeah that was the start of it and so for this guy I started with the chest actually I started with the chest and then I kind of figured out so you can see there's two layers of legs this is one layer back here and there's this front layer and um, it looks like it's one giant bit and it kind of is but um, and, and it has uh, uh, multiple parts of like um, uh, locking mechanisms it's um, yeah, it's, it's, you can see this is the backbone, so to speak. Somewhat, somewhat. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to show this guy off in the future. Actually, this is not exactly plugged in. It's placed in there. The real connection is right here and right here and right here and then back here. Um, but yeah, this one was really cool. Yeah, I also made a one-on-one -on -one, um, of, of this guy too. Um, but yeah, again, theme, construction robot, yellow and black. And um, I wanted this core part to look cool, so we had to do some unique things with the waist over here, and that was um, a technique that I borrowed from the Centurion Drone um, combiner. Or not Centurion Drone, excuse me, uh, Metropolis combiner. Um, this over here, oh, obviously, so I told you, this is the one that Toy God told me to make. And, um, you know, this is basically Soundwave, Rumble, Frenzy, or Frenzy, Rumble, whatever you want to call them. Um, and this was, you know, I've always wanted to weaponize Soundwave and always wanted him to take on kind of like the gimmicks of his tapes. And so I was trying to find a way to um, give him the pile driver mode. Uh, but I don't know, I hadn't really thought about it, but I, I swear, Toy God was just like, hey, pop the masterpiece um, pile drivers into their legs. And I did it, and dude, it's a really snug fit. If you have this at home, I, I encourage you to try it. Trust me, they're a very, very snug fit. Um, it's perfect like it's the perfect width and then after that I just plugged into the forearms and you can you know arch his head back and give him that pose like he's doing Operation Tidal Wave and um, that was the inspiration here yeah playing with Soundwave and uh, mechanizing weaponizing him so to speak with the gimmicks from his um, tape bots uh, this one over here was um, oh, I'm forgetting who it was I'm so sorry um, one of the channel members you know one of the viewers subscribers or whatever um, uh, I'm so sorry, I can't remember your name right now. But yeah, he, uh, individual that asked me basically if I could kind of um, do something with Slammer and use Airwaves specifically as the legs. And so that was kind of the prompt, a Slammer and two Airwaves and using their bodies as the, the legs. And so that's what we started with. We just started with these bits right here. And then from there, you just kind of built on top of it, you know. And as I started building it, I was like, you know, give him this blocky feet. I wanted to give him these like blocky shoulders and you know slammer already has blocky shoulders and so it was just a matter of um accentuating that so to speak and um this guy came out pretty good yeah the parts that i fumbled with at the end were this gun and the rest of these bits but i figured i could just give him like asymmetric weapons and after i kind of got past that yeah we were able to put him together um you know a lot of times it is actually um um there's a bit of a mental exercise that i have to do which is it's okay to do this or it's okay to do that. I mean, dude, there's nobody judging me here. here. Like, um, I'm the only one who's, who, who's really telling myself whether it's okay to use this as a asymmetrical gun compared to this. You know, I'm the only one who tells me yes or no. And so it's, it's sometimes thinking outside of the box and allowing yourself to think outside of the box. I'm gonna just get some water here really quick. Sorry. Uh, good old LaCroix carbonated water. Um, but yeah, it's allowing oneself to think outside of the box and think differently. And um, yeah, yeah, just painting however you like, you know. I'm using good old PowerPoint. So if you're seeing some of the weird kind of transition things going on, yeah, it's because I'm using PowerPoint. So this over here, uh, this I remember was by Cole K because this one is recent. And um, a man had asked, you know, using these very specific ingredients. So that was kind of like the prompt. Two paleotrex is one rack, one wing. You know, what can you do with those ingredients? And so that's what we were able to cook up. And so very, very happy about that. Um, yeah, in terms of how I created the legs, I want the legs to be beefy. And so I just made sure to kind of like reinforce them in the back and just make them look like, like make them look more than just these one-leggers over here. Um, and I think it came out pretty good. 
the guy on the right over here um yeah this was just um two bots and sometimes that's that's just the prompt use any two bots and make something and um yeah make it look good make it look cohesive make it look um blended versus just one guy mounting another guy as like a weapon or something like that so you can see he's all sorts of blended you can see there's the white here there's the browns back to the whites the white over here brown and it's all kind of like integrated and mixed i really like that um the area where i kind of like not necessarily fumbled but i had to kind of again just think outside the box was this part um because i wanted to give him a hand but i realized what i really need to give him a hand when he just needs a port to kind of hold this weapon and after i kind of sold myself on that and convinced myself that it was okay then we're able to give him this kind of like spinning halberd and that was real real fun and this other side over here yeah um initially i had used the dino head um to create the shoulder but then i swapped it out for the um, the waist bit i was like why don't i just do that you know and so that that's what i did and um yeah this guy was pretty pretty fun to do really really clean i like this guy okay so for this one over here is um i've always wanted to give meg some armor make him look good and um like I, I don't know i don't know why but i shied away from using fast track for a long time um just because he has these oranges and i feel like it didn't really fit on megatron and so i don't know i just didn't put it together by the way when i see stuff like this like after the picture after the fact it's not straight dude it drives me crazy it drives me crazy you'll see another one later i'll mention it but oh man these things drive me crazy they drive me nuts um, but this one over here, yeah, I wanted to deck him out, beef him out, make everything look big. Forearms look bigger, shoulders look bigger, thighs look bigger, feet look bigger, and that was the whole theme. Just kind of like magnify him, accentuate him, you know, magnify Megatron, so to speak. And um, that's what we did, yeah. And we still allowed to give him, you know, his um, his uh, accessories and add some additional guns. Ah, oh, it's driving me crazy. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and so this one was good. Yeah, this one was good. And that was kind of like the idea behind this. And also another neat thing about here is that um, figuring out how to connect these things, you know, that was an interesting challenge. And then utilizing pieces differently because behind this is the waste bit. Um, actually, no, it's, this is not the waste bit. It is... I forget now, actually. Yeah, I forget now. Um... Is it a leg? Is it another arm? It might be another arm, because I don't see... Oh, yeah, yeah, it is the arm. There's an arm, basically, plugged in over here, and that part of the arm is plugged into the leg. Yeah, and so it's a bit of an illusion, but still. I mean, when these things are just sitting on your shelf, and you're not, like, trying to, like, I don't know, play action figure with them, like, dude, they're just going to look dope, you know? Uh, this one over here, obviously, Lord Destro. Um, you know, beautiful. I mean, um, I... I don't know. There's not a ton of G.I. Joe fans from what it seems um, uh, on the channel, but um, it's cool. I just wanted to create it like a power armor for him, and um, I wanted to use all the same colors, and that was the prompt. Create power armor for Destro and um, use light colors. And so for that, we relied on um, two of the Promars and two of the um, Aragons, and I feel like it came, uh, came together really, really well. Yeah, it's a very, very fun build. Um, and I, I was listening to Ward Burglar's Welcome to Cobra Island while I was making this to kind of like just channel that and stuff. Um, and I like this a lot. Over here on the top, you can't see it here, but the way his arms are, they kind of, they, they angle down like he's holding some like controls or something like that. It, it's really neat actually. And um, he doesn't really have a real seat inside, but there's just this space and uh, it fits him quite well. And, um, you know, of course, this is just your imagination and your toys, so it doesn't really matter. See stuff like this? When this is not straight, oh, that, that drives me crazy. That drives me crazy. And this is just, you know, I'm, I'm usually taking a look at this bit here, and I'm not focusing on all the tiny details, and so that just, stuff drives me nuts. Um, anyway, also what drives me nuts is, is the fact that I keep not talking into this microphone, so my audio uh, fidelity may be slipping in and out during this recording, but all gravy. Uh, this next one over here, this is basically, yeah, utilizing all three fossilizers to make a build and doing something a little bit different with it. Uh, this one has this really, really cool kind of like frill collar type thing going on. And um, as you can see, it, it allows him to be a little bit taller. You know, it allows him to be taller. Like this right here is the level point of the Ractonite body. And normally the head would be right here. But you can see it's above. And so that makes him taller. He has this cool little like um, cowl, so to speak um lots of interesting things with this one going on and utilizing some of the tech 
that I figured out, meaning like, you know, uh, I freed my mind to be like, yeah, he doesn't need hands. He, as long as he just like holds the weapons, it's cool. And so you can see he has another like spinning halberd type thing over here. And again, I freed my mind to not use the, cause I was trying to use these hands as the hands for the longest time, but I just realized, why don't I just make them like weapon holders? And after that, things flowed really, really smooth. Yeah, and so this guy's neat. Um, this guy, this guy over here, this is a double Paleotrex. And, um, you know, a lot of times when I do the two bots, I like just using two of the same bots, basically. And did some very cool things over here. I didn't want him to seem so skinny. So did some interesting things by having the frilly part of the, um, the tail uh, basically stand in front of the shins. And um, again, having the same kind of cowl that you see over here, threading through the head and plugging in. This is a really cool mechanism. And um, somebody early, early on in the days of the channel actually taught me this. One of the channel members, uh, I don't remember that individual who who that person was, but yeah, they, they actually asked me, they're like, hey, why don't you try this? And after I did that, I was like, oh, Lordy, that's such a good move. That's such a good move. And so, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that was the prompt for this one. Two bots using Pillar Tracks, yeah, and trying to make him a little bit beef uh, versus too skinny. But I think he came out really good, yeah. And this is the basic, the the the, um, the 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 this this build I used to make the um, kind of bone kickback build that you may or may not have, may not have seen already. Yeah. What else do we got? Oh yeah, tarantula, tarantula spider droid, and so. Um, if you guys don't know, you know, um, got homeboy Punchy, uh, Punchy's Lab, um, Punchy the dog, who does a bunch of great Shapeway bits and uh, 3D printout. Yo, homie's a G. Homie's a G. He, he, he has such a good design sense. Um, and he had originally asked, um, hey, can you do like a spider tank with double brunt? And after I did that, I was like, oh, now I want to do a spider tank with, you know, everybody. And so this was, and that was kind of like the creative writing prompt that gave birth to this guy. And, um, you know, all the bots are obviously different. So the way, the way they work are different, but, um, this guy was cool too. You can see all the paint chipping off, you know, cause I've done, you know, so much, uh, bot bending with these guys. Uh, but this is the birth. Yeah. Using two cogs and this tarantula tank. I'm really, really happy with. And, um, although I don't have it here, um, there's also a double six gun that, that I'll share with you soon. And that guy ended up being like a Boston dynamics looking dude. It's kind of weird, but, um, I'll still share him nonetheless, but that was the prompt, uh, for this one two um two bots um one of the original weaponizers cog and uh spider tank yeah this one over here is uh insert you know hello there um general kenobi you're a bold one joke um uh this is obviously the grievous build um that i've done with transmutate using the um, the blast effects as lightsabers which i really really enjoyed and so this one's pretty plain to understand yeah i actually think somebody asked me to make a grievous build back in the day with paleo tracks and that's how it actually started and um i enjoy making this build i'm not exactly sure what it is about it i mean i, I do like star wars but i don't know there's something about this build that i just like building yeah, 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 yeah. Not the most complicated. Uh, and there is the leftover droid um, that you can make using the leftover parts, but um, she's not she's not pictured here. What else do we got? Oh, yeah. So this one over here, King Skywarp. And the concept here, I thought to myself, I'm like, well, what if it wasn't Starscream that had been crowned? What if somebody else had gotten the coronation armor and somehow that morphed them, mutated them, evolved them into something greater? What would our guy Skywarp look like? And so... Um, that was the prompt that I started with. And then after that, I went about gathering the perps, uh, which are very much present on Brunt. So I said, let's go to town. You know, Skywarp obviously has some silvers and purple. And so the grays and purple on Brunt. And you could even see this amber color mixes well with the with the orange tip gun. And um, yeah, yeah, that's what we did over here. Um, I didn't necessarily think of doing the four arms. And um, uh, sorry, dude, I'm just like swallowing a burp right now. Uh, I didn't necessarily uh, originally think of doing these four arms, but I eventually just kind of, um, I thought it was cool because they got these little ports up at the top over here. And um, I was like, where am I going to put these? Where am I going to put these? And after debating it for a while, um, I just ended up sticking them there. And I like it. I, I like this look. Yeah. Uh, this guy over here, obviously, dude, this is such a great toy. So first of all, I just want to say I'm not going to buy any more Studio Series Bumblebee um, 
toys. I think they're garbage, actually, except for this guy. This guy's a G. Uh, Ratchet is kind of okay, but this guy's dope. This guy's way dope. And, I'm, uh, you know, I take that back. They're not garbage. They just don't suit um, my bot bending needs. Uh, some of the designs are actually very intricate, and they're good. Um, for bot bending, they're garbage, except for this guy. This guy's really cool. And so um, this is the drill that comes from the Centurion drone set for Ironhide. And uh, I flip the arms around. Like, I... I, I um, I unplug them and then I pop them in the other side so that you can have this nice bend. And uh, some folks have been calling him Sus because it reminds them of like um, the Among Us characters. Uh, but I actually this is an homage to um, Bioshock, uh, the Big Daddy, Brawn Daddy over here. And um, yeah, this guy got a lot of love on Insta. And so very happy with this one. Yeah, yeah, really, really like this toy. Really like this character and, and um, the variety of um, play dimensions, the, the depth of play that he has. Yeah. Is there more? Oh yeah, oh yeah, over here, so we have Megatron, and so um, if you are a longtime follower of the channel, you know, I've done Megatron combiners before, but they've always been a little bit squat, and so for this one, you know, uh, okay, the concept was what would happen if Megatron got a hold of the Enigma of Combination, and I also wanted to make sure that he was a little bit more proportional, and so rather than fully collapse the legs, I kind of kept them out, and I wanted to kind of fill this area out, area out because proportionally, I just wanted to look, the torso to look bigger, and I wanted to just kind of cover th this area over here, and so I utilized his hands, he used two fast tracks, one to just plug in over here, and these are the arms plugged into the side of Meg's uh, forearms, and then we have the back piece from fast track um kind of becoming this crest slash uh sh shoulder pauldron type things and i think he looks really really great yeah you do need four of the power of the primes um hand feet type things um a unite unite warriors or combined warriors uh limb set and uh some type of fist and feet in order to get this kind of look but yeah i think he looks great uh, and one thing that really really bugs me you know i talked about stuff being out, out of like alignment oh man can't believe I took a bunch of pictures and I did not fix this. This drives me crazy. Almost made me recreate the set, but I was like, ah, whatever, dude. We can move on. Yeah. This guy over here is, uh, I was watching Planet of the Apes, and um, I wanted to see if the armor that I had created for Primal, because this is an armor bit that, um, it's a harness that I made for Primal. It's fully connected. It's very, very snug. Uh, I wanted to see if it would actually fit on the monkey mode, and uh, it did. Yeah, even better, I would say, than the robot mode. And so, yeah. Yeah, you get influenced by what you watch, you know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, you got to be careful about what you consume. And I'm not just talking about food. I'm talking about stuff on the internet and stuff. And so, yeah. But that's how we came to this guy. <laughs> but I like him. Yeah, I like him. Is that it? Is that it? Oh, not a later. So I have the Siacon set. And, you know, it comes with six dudes. And so this dude was always just left over and chilling. And I was like, ah, let's do something with this fool. And, of course, um, the closest um, fossilizer that I had with this guy's color um, was Transmutate. I wanted the yellow to kind of play with the gold and this cyan turquoise to play with this one as well. And um, almost the entire bot is basically here other than this piece. And so we converted um, this lobster mode into kind of uh, this like sea scorpion. And I think this came out pretty cool. Um, here is Grimlock um, or aka Dinobot. And um, this I just wanted to deck him out with armor. Um, maybe I'll try another version that includes Transmutate, but uh, I'm not Transmutate, Wingfinger. But this is already a bit of a chore in itself. But I do like the little additional horns that I gave him. I do like these shoulder tassels. Um, I, I like the great weapons that he has. He has two big swords. He has a tail back here. And he has this kind of uh, cup <laughs> cup kind of thing. Um, but yeah, this dude was cool. Yeah, didn't get a lot of love, but I thought he was cool. What else did we got? Okay, so that's it. And that's kind of like the thought process. Um, you know, it always starts with the prompt. And, um, you know, sometimes it's color, sometimes it's lore, sometimes it's two bots, or sometimes it's a su suggestion from one of y'all, and sorry for the noise outside. And so, yeah, it all starts from something. It's, it all starts from a seed. Rarely do I just go in and I just start grabbing parts and seeing what comes of it. It, it always kind of starts with something and then it grows from there. Yeah, it only takes a spark, you know, it only takes a spark. And so, um, yeah, so for those of y'all who have watched at the end, just want to say thank you so much for watching to the end. Um, I don't have anything special for you here. Sometimes I would hide a little giveaway here and there. You know what? There's actually little giveaway things that are speckled in um, some of the older videos that no one's found yet. And so, uh, and I don't even know which ones they are anymore. Um, but anyway, so uh, nothing here other than thank you so much for watching. Peace and love under the sky uh, above. And so, yeah. Y'all take care and be safe, and um, let's talk again very, very soon, huh? Yeah, let's do that. All right.
Take care, gang. Bye.